Okay, we're at the Embassy uh, Suites today. Uh, there's a meeting regarding a Kramer um, a shelter. Uh, the community is here today. So we're going to check and see what's, uh, what's up. Okay. okay, while we're sorting out our technical difficulties, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Councilman Mike Alvarez with the uh, City of Orange. so that there's no misunderstanding what their position is. When that was put on our agenda, I found out the Thursday before the Tuesday we got to vote on it. And legally, I could only talk to one other council member, which I did, to find out what they were gonna do. I told them that, you know, that I own property on um, Kramer Place, just north of there on the 1100 block. Um, I probably could have voted on it, but I, I don't support this effort at, at all, and I hope you guys don't as well. Uh, I've been fighting it since I got here last year. What's the solution? You know what? I'm not here to give a solution. <laughs> I'm here to protect the neighborhood. That's that's my effort. I think if you guys want to send a message to them, you've got to be at Orange City Council next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Because if you're loud and vocal there, they can tell homemade as well. That, mm -hmm. that that if they're coming to, this is what they're going to look for. So where so are they now? Mike, when you guys voted on this, did you vote on a dollar amount, or is it was it an agenda no, item? No, it was simply, from what I could gather, it was a request from uh, Supervisor Spitzer to our mayor to uh, ask the Orange to support it in the form of a resolution. Well, the resolution has absolutely no teeth to it. There's no money behind it. There's no... There's really nothing behind it. It's basically, yeah, we support it as a city council, but it's okay. really what it is. Okay. So there's zero people behind it. Okay. What is but it? Um, it tells the whole public that the city of Orange supports it. And sure. then, to me, looking in this room, that's not true. So how much they're spending now on police resources and all we the homeless? We have no plans at this time. And as many of you know, if you call on the homeless along the, the river trail, um, you're going to get a response when the police can get there. Yeah. I mean, that's a response now. If the center comes in, it's going to be a lot worse. I can tell you right now that well, Orange patrols the riverbed from Lincoln all the way down to the golf course just south of the 22 freeway. Utah I've has. been with them. I've been on my bike with them. So I know of what the problem is. It's huge you, along the river trail. I'm getting worse every day. Uh, and it's yeah, because they don't here. have shelters. As you guys know, it filters out into your neighborhood. Irvine. And they're simply not going there to see how nice your lawn is. I mean, they're going through your, they're, they're checking doors to see if you're locked, that kind of stuff. So. Actually, Irvine has shown by having a shelter that they actually have decreased the homeless situation. You know what? You, can't, you cannot compare. Utah, Utah has done that. Irvine. Irvine's a master plan city. Mm -hmm. you know, we're a 126 year old city. We're not planned like that. So we can't address problems like Irvine can. There's, that's like comparing an apple to a watermelon. It was placed on the agenda. The mayor controls the agenda. The mayor fully supported it. You can see it on the videotape. But you need to show up next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. So at the very front of the meeting, you can, it, it's what's called just where the public can talk on things that are on the agenda. And you can voice your opinion. That's where you really need to go because 
It's at City Hall in Orange at, on Chapman Avenue, 300 East Chapman. You need to go there and let them know because they don't believe that this room, I bet you they, they, they would not believe me when I see them later tonight that this room is full of people because there's, you know, there's, they, they don't really get it. Full of ignorance. Show up That's what I and said. let them know that you don't support it. Now, I know it's on our agenda for a second vote on approving the, the resolution that goes to the county. In our neighborhood, we had um, a school that school district was looking to sell to a, a developer for apartments. That neighborhood came out in droves constantly, and they stopped it because they showed up at all the council meetings. Now, right. they have representatives that monitor us, and, and I think it's great. It's, it's where government has to be held accountable, and you're the folks that need to hold these guys accountable. That's all I have to say. Thank you, much. Well, my name is Keith McCullough. I'm with law firm of Oliver Robert Smith. Glad to be here tonight. Um, any lawyers in the room? Good. Well, I've been doing, uh, I've been practicing public law for, for 25 years, both for and against public agencies. I do a lot of uh, environmental and real property litigation, acquisition of private property for public purposes. Uh, I deal with the California Environmental Quality Act. Sometimes you heard that referred to as CEQA. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, Matt, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't to run that for me. This is just an agenda of what I'd like to just briefly talk about tonight. Um, I'd like to touch on if the county were following the law, what would we likely see in this instance? Um, I want to touch on what the county's own report has seen. There's a December 2013 report online. You can see it's a very comprehensive report for suggestions and uh, criteria that should be utilized. Uh, third, I'd like to talk about what the county has done and what it has not done. Fourth, um, one of the things that we ought to be looking for under a CEQA review, under an environmental review, is an examination and consideration of alternatives. We've seen no alternative cons uh, considerations. Question of whether this is a good expenditure of public funds. And then I'd, I'd like to bring up one other regulatory consideration we've heard nothing on so far. So Matt, if you'd advance to the next one. Uh, let's, the fundamental principle here is that the county cannot just buy private property for no public purpose. Okay, let's, let's understand that. That the county can't just go out and buy private property unless it has a public use or a public purpose that is specifically identified. Uh, Fullerton and uh, Anaheim lent the resolution support to the county to support the purchase of a, of a homeless shelter at 1000 North Kramer Place. The county on its June 2nd agenda identified several potential uses, including additional office space, public works space, and the possibility of a homeless shelter. I thought that was quite disingenuous because the only thing that has been mentioned on North Kramer Place is a homeless shelter. So the first thing that, that we would expect is, number one, the identification of a project. What's the project? It's a 200-bed homeless shelter. Let's, let's tell the public that. That's what we would expect, the announcement of a project. Secondly, when we talk about any kind of a public project, whether it's the public doing it or it's the authorization of private activities by the public agency, we engage in what we call a CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act review. And that review requires consideration of alternatives. It requires examination of police and emergency response sources, uh, water, sewer, traffic safety, all kinds of considerations that we would normally expect the county to be going through. But we have none of that with respect to 1000 North Kramer Place. So uh, we don't have a consideration of alternatives. We don't have an analysis of environmental and community impacts. We've heard nothing from the county as to how they would assure that the homeless and the public would be safe on North Kramer Place. If you've been there, it's an industrial area. We've got some of those businesses with semi-trucks coming in and out all day long. There's been no description from the county as to how we're going to protect both the public and the homeless that would be there. These are some of the things we would normally expect a public agency to be looking at and vetting with the public before they engage in a project. Uh, under a CEQA review, the county would be soliciting your written comments, your verbal comments, and would be required to respond to those comments. We see none of that in this instance. 
And then you would also look at mitigation. <coughs> if you identified uh, issues that would create a potential for significant environmental impact, we would look at mitigation measures and how to bring those impacts down. We've had no consideration of alternatives or mitigation factors. Uh, next slide, please. I'm sorry. This is all propaganda fear tactics. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. I can't stand here. People have to have common sense that if you don't have that if you don't have those shelters, they'll be pissing on your front yards. Let me show you that. Where are the homeless now? Sorry, I can't stand in there and hear all the bullshit.